Hello and welcome back to the channel. Brandon Davidson, owner of Davidson Audio, where we specialize solely in the Indian motorcycle audio solutions for the riders. And in today's video, I wanted to go over something I get asked a lot because sometimes it happens when I do a complete pre-install, pre-tune package, the customer gets it, they turn it on, they get a turn on pop, or the amps just don't turn on. The number one culprit of this is that it's taken too long through shipping or they took their time and their time delay module lost programming. So in this video, I'm gonna go over just how to reprogram this time delay module. So that way, when you get your package, if you have this issue, you can just go ahead and reprogram that time delay module and get back on the road enjoying your audio. And this will go over, regardless if it's the PAC TR7, the newer recoil UTR, or even the Access AX UTR. These are all the exact same modules. The only difference is the Access model has a slightly different case. So let's go over to the workbench, put these on our power supply, show you the difference between the three of them and exactly how to reprogram them. All right, now that we're over at the workbench, what I wanna do is we're gonna go over quickly the three different timing modules that I have and currently use and just show you any differences and what they're used for. So first off, from right to left, this is the PAC Audio TR7 time delay module. This is one made from PAC Audio, obviously. So you can tell, hard plastic case wire connector, and this is the on-off switch for programming. And that's about it for this one. This is the Access AXUTR, take it out of the packaging. Again, <laughs> darn near the exact same thing. This one, I actually have the harness here, but as you can see, I can unplug it, plug it right into the PAC TR7. They're identical. The pack comes with the exact same harness. Only difference is access changed the case a little bit sleeker, cut the corners off. Same connector on off port here, switch, sorry. Then the recoil UTR, packaging, instructions, wiring harness, exact same case as the pack, looks identical. Little wire harness, on off programming switch, and that's about it. Um, they both, they all come with their own little instructions. Um, so to the harness, now the instructions are pretty confusing for the first time when you go to read them. They've got a couple different charts. Um, in here you gotta read through it, like different, the different features that they offer. And then here's the chart on how to program it. And then it goes into wiring instructions wiring instructions, programming, and whatnot. Um, I'm not gonna go super, super in depth with every programming option. I'm just gonna show you the applicable application for the Challenger and the Chieftain audio wiring. So real quick, they have seven wires on them. You got a red, black, green, or brown, green, blue, white, and orange wire in here. So the black is going to be your chassis ground. The red is 12 volt constant or switched. Your green is a positive 0.8 to 16 volt input trigger. The brown is a negative input put trigger. The blue is gonna be a positive 12 volt output, two amp max. The white, and the orange are both negative outputs, 150 milliamp max. So that's the wiring on here. And then obviously, again, you have the on off program switch on here. For the Challenger and the Chieftain, well, any of the Indian audio packages, when you get them from me, the white and the orange are going to be pulled out of this harness and in the box because we don't utilize them 
The red is gonna go to the constant 12 volt in the harness. The black is gonna go to the ground in the harness. The brown is just going to be cut and shrink tubed out of the way because this is what you're gonna to use to reprogram it if you need to. The green wire is going to your DSP's um, remote output, like the DSR1, or for the HKI Mini that I also use, this will go to the remote input of the DSP as well. So this will share the same remote wire from the head unit to the HKI Mini. And the blue wire is gonna be your remote output wire that is gonna to go to your amplifiers. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go over, we're gonna grab the power supply and I'm gonna go through the process of programming this. All right, here I have my little portable power supply. It just takes 120 volt AC input and gives me 12 volt DC. It's got an adjustment. I have it set at 12 volts. This is simply a connector I use for my harnesses to give the harness power for programming, um, DSPs and whatnot. So we get that out of the way. This is just a ground. What's important here is I made this little harness for the time delay module. What you're gonna put do first is ensure when you get it, this is gonna be in the off position. You're gonna wanna take it to the on position while it's unplugged from the bike. So at this point, you'll get, it'll be in your system, you'll unplug it, flip this to the on position, and then you will plug it back in and you are ready to program it. So what you're gonna be looking for is there's a little red LED that's gonna flash and we're gonna go through the sequence. So I'm gonna try to go through it. We'll see that I can explain it and then we may replay it again so that way you all can see it. But we're initially going to pulse the brown wire to ground 12 times. That's gonna tell it that we are wanting to program the outputs for delayed time which is gonna be the blue one, which is your positive. And then from there, we're gonna tap it once. It's gonna flash, we're gonna wait. We're gonna do it another time. And then a third time to let know we're gonna program all three outputs. And then after that, we're gonna pulse it once and it's gonna flash for how long? So the first flash is for minutes. Second one is for, um, tenths of a second so like 10 20 30 you know 40 50 up to a minute and the last one is going to be individual seconds so one through nine we want to program this for 13 seconds so on the first flash we're not going to do anything because we don't minutes the next one we're going to flash it once because we want you know 10 and then the last one we're going to do it three times to show that we want three seconds for a total of 13 seconds. Then it's gonna flash four times, acknowledging the programming. Then we're gonna repeat that process two additional times. And then after the last time, it'll flash four times and then it'll hyper flash, letting us know it's been programmed. We're gonna flip the switch to off and then it's good to go. So I know that was a lot, Apologies, but let's go ahead and show you and hopefully you can see this flash and help you program this. So first unplug it, flip our switch to the on position, plug it back in, and then we're gonna pull this out and we're simulating that it's in the harness. You're gonna take your ground, your brown, and we're gonna go to ground. So here I'm just gonna pulse it and we're gonna count 12. That was 12 and now it's gonna flash back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now nothing. So now this is where we're gonna pulse it once, wait, and repeat that three times to let it know we're programming all three. It acknowledges, wait a second, do it again. 
It acknowledges again. It acknowledges. So now we've told we're going to program all three outputs, the blue, white, and orange. Now we're going to tap it. We're going to go into time. So tap. That's the minutes. Now the tenths. So once. It acknowledges. Three flashes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now it's gonna go four times, letting us know the first one's been programmed. So let's pre repeat. Nothing for minutes. Once for 10 seconds. One, two, three. For 13 seconds, as it flash four times, letting us know that one's been programmed. Now let's repeat for a third time. Nothing for minutes. Once for 10 seconds. One, two, three. Now it's gonna reciprocate. Flash four times. And now there's a hyper flash letting us know that this has been programmed. So here you're going to flip this to the off position. And now this is programmed for the time delay. And apologies, you did see that in the second programming, I did hit it twice. So that one was technically um, programmed for 23 seconds. So if that happens, what you're going to do is you're going to leave the switch on. You're going to unplug it. Wait a couple of seconds, plug it back in, repeat the repeat the the process until you programmed all three times for 13 seconds. Now at this point, you can turn your bike on, verify that the time delay is there, and you don't get a turn on pop, and you are now good to go. All right, just like that, we have walked you through the process of one, the difference between the three modules, which, as we stated. Is simply just the case, the programming, the wiring is all the same. Second, we took you through just how to program this. The biggest thing I want to express is please be patient. <laughs> Watch this video a few times. It takes a few times to get it down, but I promise you can do it. It only takes patience. So again, when would you use this? If you get a complete one, if you just buy the components from me or somewhere else and you want to do the time delay, then this will help you program them for your bike. Um, why you would need this is because there's a turn on pop from the factory of these Indian motorcycles. Any bike from the factory, the Chieftain or the Challenger, if you turn them on, you're going to see the head unit boot up and then you're going to hear a pop from the speakers, it's because the head unit or the ride command is taking so long to boot up that the bike is turning on the speakers and the amplifiers ahead of time. So by the time the head unit catches up, it sends the signal out to turn on and play audio. The speakers are already on, everything is on, so you get that audible pop. I don't want these in my aftermarket systems. So if the DSP does not allow for programmable output for as long as 13 seconds, then that's where these modules come into play. If you buy an audio package from me, pre-tuned, set up, it's already gonna be in the harness, it's already gonna be programmed. I'm doing this video in case you've waited a long time, it loses timing, you now know how to do it. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and I hope it helps you make your decision on either buying an audio package or considering the different components that are needed. So again, Brandon Davidson with Davidson Audio and I'm out.